receiving love from God is is really the the ultimate approach where we can begin to love ourselves better, love others better, um, experience love for ourselves and experience love from others better as well. And so uh, that's just backed up by uh, 1 John 4, 19. It says, we love because he first loved us. So the only way that it's even possible for us to experience love and to give love, now I'm talking about the true biblical love here, is because God first loved us because we received that love from him first. And then from that point, we overflow in love for him and for ourselves and for others. Now, while I talk about this precedence, that doesn't mean that if uh, one area of, of this equation is void, that that eliminates your ability to love uh, in any other part. There's been plenty of people, me included, who've experienced um, just a kind of a self-hatred in certain situations where you're just so upset with yourself and angry at yourself. Um, that doesn't mean that because of that now I can't love God and I can't love others, but that does mean that I'm diminished to a certain degree in the way that I'm able to express that love to God and to others. All right, so enough on that. Now let's start with the diagram. I'm going to be working my way from the top right, going all the way down, and then swinging back up to the top left and working my way back down again. All right, so uh, like I said before, we're going to be diving in specifically. The next six teachings are going to be about each one of these dimensions of love, but I wanted to give you a quick overview right now um, just so you can kind of get a taste of what, what's to come. So the first area is receiving love from God, and that's basically experiencing God's affection. It's just experiencing the love that he has for us and letting that transform and move and, and really be something that is just uh, impactful in our lives. The second area is receiving love for ourselves. Uh, now, this might be a little bit easier understood if you think about it more as understanding our identity in Christ. Basically understanding who we are now because of what Jesus has done for us. And then from that point, being able to love ourselves because God loves us and God is in us and Christ has transformed us. The third dimension is receiving love from others. Now, this can be manifested in a ton of different ways, but the way that I'm gonna choose to focus on it is basically um, the experience of being vulnerably accepted. And what I mean by that is oftentimes in small groups uh, of people that are sharing, you know, deep things on their heart that are vulnerable and that expose them um, and being able to receive love from that group or from another person if it's a one-on-one -on -one instance, that type of love is just extremely transformational uh, to be accepted for who we are, even with all of our flaws. So that's the love that I'm talking about when I'm talking about receiving love from others, or that's the one I'll be focusing on at least. There's plenty of other ways that we receive love from others. Heck, someone could send you some flowers and that's receiving love from others. Um, but the way that I'm going to approach this is more of just really being vulnerably accepted by a group of people or by another individual. All right, so those were all of our receiving receiving aspects of love. Now let's go over to the other side of the diagram and look at all of the giving aspects of love. Now I believe that um, those receiving aspects and the giving aspects are both vitally important, but I do believe that the more that we're able to receive on one side in a healthy way, the more that we're going to be able to give on the other side. So, for example, the more that we're able to receive the love of God and experience his affections for us, the more that we're going to be able to in turn love God and give love to him and be obedient to him. Same way with uh, ourselves. If we hate ourselves, don't, aren't able to receive love for ourselves, look at ourselves terribly, it's going to be really hard um, to give love to ourselves, which I'll be talking about, which involves self-care. Um, and then same for others. If we can't receive love from others, if we're always pushing people away, blocking people, not letting them um, love us, then I don't see that uh, it's going to be a very uh, likely situation that you're going to be giving a lot of love to other people too. All right, so at the top of this list, giving love to God, I believe that this comes down to affection-based obedience. And I will break that down specifically uh, in an upcoming teaching. But what I mean by affection-based obedience is so many times in the scripture, God, God says to us, you know, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And so walking in that uh, love of God is really about obeying him, about understanding who he is, understanding his will for our lives, and then walking out that will. Being obedient to Jesus is one of the highest form, if not the highest forms of showing love and giving love to God. All right, the next step down is giving love to ourselves. 
Um, now this one, again, it, it's going to be a little confusing to think about this as we live in a very selfish culture. We live in a culture where everyone's kind of looking out for themselves uh, for a majority. So I, I want to just completely erase that notion when I'm talking about giving love for ourselves. And instead, what I'm talking about is proper self-care. Um, it's so easy for people who are trying to live uh, for Christ, live solid Christian lives, to continue to give and give and give and give to the point where they are completely um, depleted of all of their resources, uh, their time, their money, their energy, everything. We want to be continually giving of those, but it's it's important, too, that we are caring for ourselves, that we are taking time for rest, for relaxation, uh, for silence and solitude and just things that really nourish the soul. And finally, uh, the, the bottom sphere here over on the left, we have giving love to others. Now, I want to be careful by saying the bottom sphere. It's so vitally important. All of these things are kind of like at the, the mountaintop, the threshold of our priority. They're, they're extremely, extremely important and valuable things. Um, and so when we're talking about giving love to others, what I'm talking about here is making the invisible God visible to the world. And we do that by showing the love of Christ, by sharing that love, by living a life that demonstrates God's love for us to other people. Uh, there's a saying that goes, um, you are the only Bible that some people will ever read. And basically that means that the way that you act, the way that you um, show yourself amongst others them knowing that you're a Christian, that's how they view God and that's how they view uh, Christianity and, and our faith. And so it's just so important that we really, really um, just spend ourselves in service and love to other people.